And a very pleasant good evening. Thanks so much for joining us and welcome to game night in the region here on the Region Sports Network streaming worldwide on the internet at facebook.com slash region sports and region sports.com. We come to you tonight from Portage High School as the Region Sports Network presents the Portage Indians taking on the Valparaiso Vikings in the Doodlin Conference opener for both ball clubs. Alongside my broadcast partner, Jay Simmons, this is John Fitzgerald. Thanks so much for joining us on this first Friday in December. The conference opener between two red-hot ball clubs, Valparaiso at nine up and two down, and Portage off to their best start in over 30 years at nine and one. Yeah, Portage is red-hot. They have won eight in a row. The last time they lost was at Munster, November 27th, and they revenged that loss on December 29th against Munster, 42-28. to So they're really stepping up their game since the beginning of the season. You know, with the new coach, you're trying to figure out what's going on in terms of the players' plays. And so I think the players are getting acclimated to the new coach. Last year, the Indians just nine up and 15 down overall. They were one and six in Doodling Conference play. You said the brand-new head coach in Brian Klaus and pretty much a revamped ball club now. All of a sudden, beginning, they can, believing that they can win, <laughs> heading into conference play here winning nine of their first ten. Valparaiso, no stranger to winning, nine and two, and currently ranked number nine in the latest IHSAA Class 4A AP poll, as well as the Indiana High School Basketball Association Coaches Poll. Their two losses, two of the top 20 teams in the state in Warren Central and on the road down at Carmel. Yeah, Carmel, Carmel they lost 45-32. They just couldn't get their offense going. And then against Warren Central, they stepped it up a little bit. It was a very close game, 57-52. So I'm, I'm going to see. I'm going to see Valpo bounce back from that loss. It's been a it's been a week off, a week and a half off. They've last played December 30th. So I think they've really probably sat down and went over some game film, looked at it, figured out what they were doing wrong, and I'm sure the coach really drilled it into them over the last week. Brand new campaign begins tonight with the start of conference play, and we'll take a look at tonight's starting lineups, and we'll begin with Valparaiso as. Jay had said 9-2 and two overall. They're coming off that 57-52 loss to Warren Central. That occurring in the championship game of the Phil Cox Memorial Classic down in Kokomo just before the new year. Valparaiso into the direction of Barrett Kuhlman, a 1996 graduate of Bethel College, now in his seventh campaign on the Valpo sidelines, a record of 128 victories against just 39 defeats. Kuhlman is 230 and 101 overall in 14 years as a head coach. That also includes seven seasons out in Fort Wayne at Northrop High School. He has led the Vikings to three sectional titles in his six full years at Valparaiso, including one last year in which they went 20 and 6 overall on a perfect 7 and 0 in the Doonland. This is how Valparaiso is going to line up tonight. At one forward spot, it's going to be Michael Flynn, 6'3", a senior, averaging 4.5 points, 2.7 rebounds. The other forward spot belongs to Connor McCall, 6'4", a junior. He's averaging 3.5 points and 3 rebounds per game. At the pivot, it's an awfully good one. Mason Jones, 6'7", a junior. The team's top scorer and rebounder, 16.2 points per game to go along with 6 caroms per contest. He also dishes off 2.8 assists per game. The backcourt combination... Blaine Dalton, 6'1", a senior, 8.5 points, 3.3 rebounds, 2 assists. And the point guard, Reese Walls, 6 foot a senior. He's second on the club in scoring, just a hair under 10 points per game. 5.8 assists per contest. That's tops on this ball club and currently second in the region. This is a Valparaiso offensive team that averages 11 steals per contest. And Brees Walls... On-ball defense, a big part of that. In 11 games, Walls has already racked up 43 steals this year. So it's Flynn, Walls, McCall, Dalton, and Jones for Valparaiso. Now for the Portage Indians, who are 9-1. and one. We'll take a look at their starting lineup when we come back after this timeout. This is the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Hi, I am Crowell Company's Lantern Man. I'll cover your motorcycle. I'll be with you on the water. I'll be with you on the snow. I'll cover your insurance needs wherever you go. I'll be at Crowell Agency from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. As Crowell Company's Lantern Man, I'm your insurance superhero. Crowell Company's, the insurance professionals in Highland, 
Maryville, and Michigan City. Did you know? Wow, they'll prepare fresh fish while you wait. Did you know? They make over 40,000 donuts from scratch every week? Did you know? They offer 23 different deli platters for your party? Did you know? They have freshly chopped fajita mix ready to cook. Did you know? They have the best fried chicken in the area? Did you know? They offer our signature curbside service 14 hours a day. Strike Van Till, now you know. John Fitzgerald alongside Jay Simmons back here at Portage High School ahead of the Doonling Conference opener between the Portage Indians at 9-1 and one, and the Valparaiso Vikings on the road tonight, currently at 9-2. and two. Let's take a quick look at our Friday night forecast brought to you as always by our friends at Academy Electric Heating and Cooling. Tonight's forecast, well, outside, it's a bitter <laughs> 6 degrees. Luckily enough, we are inside the gymnasium here at Portage High School much higher than the six degrees outside. That's a game night forecast brought to you by Economy Electric Heating and Cooling. Now tonight's National Anthem. And, of course, the play of our national anthem tonight ahead of Portage and Valparaiso in a key Doonling Conference opener, key matchup on this Friday night. Let's continue with tonight's starting lineups as we move to the Portage Indians at 9-1 and one under the direction of Brian Klaus, a 1994 graduate Druitt of Portage High School, now in his first season here on the alma mater sidelines. He is 193 and 158. That includes six seasons at Lake Station High School. And the last nine, he has been the head man at Hanover Central, where he led the Wildcats to sectional titles in 2019 and 2020. This is how the Indians will line up tonight. One forward spot belongs to what Michael Wellman, 6'3", just a freshman. 5.3 points, three rebounds per game. At the other forward spot, Blake Creech, 6'4", a senior, Five and a half points, 4.6 rebounds per game. He also leads the club with 13 block shots over their first 10 games. Three guard rotation, one guard, Garrett Clark. 6'2", a freshman, 4.3 points, 1.2 rebounds per game. Terrell Kraft, 6'2", a junior. He is second in the ball club in both scoring and rebounding. 7.3 points per game to go along with 5.6 rebounds. And Kamari Slaughter, 6'4", a junior. The team's top scorer, rebounder, and distributor, 17.3 points per game, 7.2 rebounds, and a team high 2.9 assists per contest. He leads this club with 20 steals in 10 games and is coming off a 22.9 rebound, four assists, and five block performance in their win over Morton last week at the Highland Hoops Classic. So for Portage, on the front line, it's Wellman and Creech in the backcourt combination of Garrett Clark, Terrell Kraft, and Kamari Slaughter. I think this is going to be a great matchup. A couple big-time scorers in Mason and Slaughter, averaging somewhere between 16 and 17 points. I think it's going to, we're going to see which team's going to go to their big score early on. Our opening tip tonight here in Portage brought to you by the Academy Electric Heating and Cooling. Academy Electric Heating and Cooling, keeping you cool in the summer and cozy in the winter. It's Creech against Jones, the toss, the tap of the opening touch, controlled by Valparaiso as they attack the basket. 
to our right. Valparaiso in the road greens. Jones out to Walls on the left point. Dribbles to the foul line. Around to the right they go to Dalton. Dalton penetrates to the foul line. They're going to say he picked up his pivot foot with a jump stop in the paint. And Valparaiso's opening touch of the night comes up empty. They turn it over and Portage goes on offense in a scoreless tie. Yeah, good start. Good start to the game right there by Valparaiso. Good ball movement. Just a traveling call right there. Just sort of hesitant on that first shot. Kamari Slaughter with the basketball. Traces the arc of the dribble now straight away on the dribble against Dalton, directing traffic between the rings. Two hands a pass out to Wellman. He stands at the left point. Not a craft. A lob feed down low to Creech. Broken up nicely in tier by Valparaiso. And here come the Vikings. Dalton. Right corner comes Flynn. Puts the ball on the deck. Takes it out to the point. Now elbow left. A flip above the arc to Walls. He'll penetrate, drive in, up with a right hand, scoops and scores. Boy, what a nice move. Nice take right down the lane, fearless. Nice little hook shot right there at the end. So Reese Walls opens the scoring here tonight. Valparaiso takes a 2-0 lead. Minute five into this one. Doodling conference opener for both ball clubs. 9-1 and one Portage now on offense. And the home whites, they give the slaughter above the arc on the right side. Matched up with Dalton. A long three on the way. Came up short off the tip of the orange iron. Karam's out of bounds. One yeah. shot now for Portage. That trip and Valpo goes back on offense with a 2-0 lead. Yeah, Portage just seemed to be standing around a little bit there on offense, trying to get their play set. They just need to get that ball movement going. And Valparaiso going to set a play here on the right-hand side. Walls terminates a dribble, gives to Jones, jump stop in the lane, draped with defenders, couldn't get the bunny to go in front of the rim, but he was hacked on his way in, and Mason Jones will go to the stripe for a pair of foul shots. Yeah, Mason Jones, just a nice take right there, nice little head fake, went up strong, drew the foul. Jones, 79% on the year from the stripe. Right-hander, deep knee bend, sends the first, and it's nothing but net. So Jones, team's top scorer, has his first point of the night. One more foul shot to come. Foul committed by Blake Creech, the 6'4 senior. That's his first of the evening. Second one by Jones. Good again. Yeah, Mason Jones. Just some real nice form. Good rotation on the ball. Hits the bottom of the well on both of them. So Jones has two. Reese Walls has two. And Valparaiso a 4 nothing lead. We've played just about two minutes. Slaughter. Gives left side to Wellman above the arc. Not a craft. Head and shoulder fake. Drives on Jones. Jumps stop. Up with the left hand. Left to the rim. Left it short. And the rebound of Alparaiso. Yeah, Mason Jones. Just good defense. Didn't flinch on that. Stayed his ground. Jones has it top of the wheel. Now they give it to Brees Walls. On the right point. Into Jones. Up top. Dalton open. Three left wing. Rattles and falls. Yeah, good ball movement right there by Valparaiso. Guys moving without the ball. That was huge right there. Lane Dalton with his first three, and Creech at the other end, spinning and scoring in the paint for his first two of the night. Jones spots up three ball right corner. It's off the mark too strong. Weak side rebound controlled by Terrell Kraft. Yeah, nice pace to this game right now. 7-2 Valparaiso, and Slaughter tried to find Kraft, but couldn't handle the pass. Goes out of bounds baseline right to Valparaiso. Yeah, some strong defense both ends right now, but good ball movement on both offenses. Nice pace of play right here. So Brees Walls, the six-foot senior, into the offensive end with a belt high bounce. Gives to Jones, short corner right. One dribble into the paint now, kicks it out. Up top, McCall, right corner, Walls rising a three. Off the front of the rim, no. Slaughter the weak side rebound. Slaughter's going to push in transition, driving in on Walls. Layup doesn't go as he had Dalton backpedaling. Contact made, and that's going to send Kamari Slaughter to the line for a pair of foul shots. Yeah, Slaughter a little bit out of control, but was able to draw the contact and draw the foul, the two free throws. See how he does from the line. 60% on the year, 27 to 45. First free throw, nothing but cotton. Yeah, again, nice form, nice rotation on the ball. He is red hot, averaging 22.5 points per game over his last five. Second one good. 
Well, then you know he's starting to get the good feel for the new coach's offense. Starting to starting to you know get a little confidence. See if they go back to Mason Jones here on the offensive end for Valpo. 7-4 Valparaiso with the rock. Three ball from the left wing out of the hands of Michael Flynn. Too strong. Slaughter the rebound in transition. Down the lane. Blocked away by Jones. Into the hands of Walls. Walls wants to push. Slaloms into the forecourt. Down the lane. Up of the right hand. Layup. Good. Count it. And the foul. Big time play by Brees Walls going coast to coast to force the action. He has points number three and four. And he'll go to the line. Looking to convert the three-point play as Michael Wellman picks up his first foul of the night. Yeah, Walls, that's twice now. He's taken the ball to the hole strong against bigger players. He has no fear out there. Team's top free throw shooter, 88% on the year, and he knocks it down. So Walls completes the three-point play. He has five points, and it's Valparaiso 10, Portage 4. Yeah, Portage's got to get some ball movement away from the ball. They seem to be standing still away from the ball. A lot of one-shot opportunities so far for this Indian ball club. Wellman has it above the arc on the right side. Gives to Garrett Clark. He'll drive. And it poked away from behind by Brees Walls into the hands of Jones. Jones right of the key. Euro step in the lane. Layup attempt. Rolled out. Rebound back tapped. And finally controlled off the deck by Michael Wellman. And Brian Klaus wants to take time. It'll be a 30-second timeout. We'll keep it right here with 3.51 to play. Here in the opening quarter in Valparaiso, the visiting Vikings off to an early 10-4 edge on the homestanding Indians. Hey, don't forget tonight at the conclusion of tonight's game, we'll name the Crowl Company's Lantern Man Superhero of the Game. They have offices open from 9 to 7, Monday through Friday. Boy, that's an awful lot of office hours. And, <laughs> <laughs> and Saturday till 2 in Highland, Maryville, and Michigan City. You know, I, th- I think the pace of the play right here is suit and Valpo. They really like to push that ball, catch the Portage defense in disarray and have been taking advantage of some rebounds is pushing the ball up the court, doing a nice job. Mason Jones is doing a great job on team defense, swatting a couple shots so far already. And Walls has gotten his hands into the passing lane a couple of times as well. This Valparaiso team averages 62.7 points per game but gives up just over 44. Slaughter's jumper. Off the back of the iron, no good. Adler has let the rebound for Valparaiso. Here come the Vikings left to right. Jones short corner right up against Creech. Jump step blocked away by Creech into the hands of Wellman. Outlet right to Slaughter. Slaughter into the offensive end. Yeah, Creech, nice defense. Stood his ground and was able to block the shot. Looked like Jones went a little bit too far under the basket on that drive. Slaughter on the dribble against Derek Brooks. Foul line, Creech, jumper from 12, too strong. Jones Scott for the rebound. It was back tap, still loose on the deck, and a run down in backcourt by Garrett, who leads it over to Kamari Slaughter, lays it up and in. Good job by Garrett Clark to find the open man in Slaughter after the loose ball scramble, and Slaughter converts. Yeah, nice hustle right there, Portage on the, on the rebound right there. Just nobody could corral it and found an open man underneath the basket. 10-6 now, all of a sudden, Portage back within four. Jones, three ball left wing doesn't go. He got the offensive rebound and his run to the rim on the left-hand side of the lane. He got hacked. So Jones, I believe, will have two foul shots to come. Foul line right. See if they say that occurred on the ground that or looks, if it's going to be a shooting foul. It's going to be on the ground. It looks like Valparaiso is going to get the ball out underneath the basket. So it'll be a blocking foul on Garrett Clark. That'll be his first. Team foul number three here in the opening quarter on Portage. 10-6 Valparaiso by four with the basketball. They inbound. Three ball out front by Hazlitt. Doesn't go off back iron. Brooks ran down the rebound. Refeeds Hazlitt. Now to Jones right of the key. Runs in to Terrell Kraft who dug in and took the charge. Big time defensive stand by Terrell Kraft against the progressing Mason Jones. Forces the foul on Jones. The offensive variety, his first. Team foul number two on Valpo, and Portage takes over. Yeah, Kraft really took a shot right there because he had Jones going full speed to the basket, and he just stood there and took it. Good play. Slaughter to the offensive end. Works right around a Kraft ball screen, and I believe we're going to get a hand check here. We do. On Jack Kuka, the 6'6 senior, who came out to defend Slaughter on the arc. So that'll be Kuka's first. 
Reset the possession for Portage. Right corner to Valier. His first touch of the night to Slaughter. Straight away. Lob feed down low to Creech. Cook has stepped in front. Gets it ahead to Jack Smiley, the rookie guard, who works into the offensive end. Gives to Jones. High on the right. Dribble handoff. Adler has it. Now turns. Finds Smiley. Right point. Smiley guarded by Garrett Clark. Puts the ball on the deck. Works around a Jones screen. Into the right corner. Hazlitt. They feed the post. Kuka back to the basket. Wheels into the lane. Up right hand. And it's good. Jack Kuka. He's 6'6". He's a tough matchup. And he has his first two off the bench. Yeah. He, he saw the size advantage and took it, took it to the hole strong. Creech down low. Gets it into Kraft. Who puts it off the window and in with the left hand. Left to the rim. Yeah. Nice back screen for him to get open on. 12-8 now, Valparaiso by four with the basketball into Kuka again. Half hook right hand doesn't go. Brooks battled down low with Creech for it. They're going to say last touched by Creech. It'll be, check that last touch by Brooks. It's going to be Portage basketball, excuse me. Now Kuka's got to take that ball a little bit stronger to the basket. He was sort of fading away on that second shot. He's got the size advantage. Just got to take it to the, to the rack. Slaughter to the offensive end, attacking four court left. Above the arc of the left side to Clark. Now Creech straight away. Matched up with Hazlitt. Clark, long two, left corner, doesn't go. Del Valle, the offensive rebound, put it back up and in. Primo Del Valle, working hard on the glass, got the offensive rebound in front of the rim, able to finish, and now he'll have a three-point opportunity foul line left. Yeah, poor job defensively by the Valparaiso Vikings. They've got to get that defensive rebound. And that's a couple times now that Portage has been able to take advantage of offensive rebounds and come up with some points. And Blaine Dalton picks up his second foul, so he'll take a seat on Barrett Kuhlman's bench. Devalier to the line, foul line left, 60% on the year. He's 3 of 5, make it 4 of 6. So Valle converts a three-point play, and just like that, Portage is back within one. 12-11, Valparaiso with the basketball and a one-point lead. Smiley. Left baseline gives to Brooks, and he tried to make a move top of the circle, but they call him for steps. Yeah, they had some good ball movement right there, Vikings, and they just, again, that's a couple of unforced turnovers by the Vikings offense. So Portage. Slaughter gives to Garrett Clark between the circles. Not a Terrell Kraft. Del Valle, two hands of pass over to Creech. He's well above the arc. They spread the floor, 19 for the first quarter clock. Yeah, it looks like they're going to play for the last shot here. Some good ball movement, looking for somebody breaking through the lane. Clock twisting down to 11. Kraft at the right point. Dribble handoff. Slaughter, jump stop right of the key, kicks it right corner. Garrett Clark rising a three, and it gives Portage a two-point lead. 14 to 12. As Garrett Clark buries his fourth three ball of the year, he was just 19% coming in, but his first attempt of the night finds the bottom of the net. We've played eight minutes here at Portage High School. Our count after one quarter of play. Indians 14, Valparaiso 12. Back in a moment. This is the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. From schools to stadiums, hospitals and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. Alongside Jay Simmons, John Fitzgerald, back here at Portage High School, the Dune Lake Conference opener. A pair of red-hot ball clubs and the homestanding Indians, thanks to a Garrett Clark three in the waning moments of that opening quarter, have taken their first lead of the night. It stands at 14-12 after one quarter of play. Yeah, and they got the ball with 30 seconds left in that first quarter and were able to have some good ball movement and get a wide-open look to take the lead. 
Garrett Clark between the legs and the dribble terminates. Now gives it right sideline over to Creech. Valparaiso now in a 2-1-2 zone defense for the first time tonight. Yes, well, trying to just slow down that offense a little bit, throw a curve here, maybe do a couple, a couple possessions with that zone. Slaughter above the arc. Now on the left wing is Garrett Clark. They've run 35 seconds off the clock so far in this possession. Slaughter right ash mark, directing traffic. Yeah, it looks like it caught him completely off guard offensively. They're trying to get, a, get their uh, offensive guys set, and it just seems like they are disorganized out there. Del Valle into the post to Clark. Great ball movement as Creech found Kraft low on the left to put it off the window at end. Points number three and four for Terrell Kraft, and it's now a four-point portage lead at 16-12. Yeah, once they got the offensive set, they made a couple passes and sharp passes in the lane. Wide open layup. Walls gives to Jones straight away above the arc. He's now matched up with Slaughter. Left side, Smiley. Short corner left, pulls up from 10 baseline left, and it's sweet off the bounce. Jack Smiley, the rookie guard, has his first two. Yeah, what a nice play by a freshman out there. Takes it to the baseline, a little 10-footer. Nothing but bottom of the net. Valparaiso still down by two. 16-14 Portage. Nice spin move by Creech. Blocked away by Jones. Garrett Clark got it back. 18-foot jumper is sweet. Garrett Clark showing the hot hand. Nice long 18-foot two ball. Smiley tries a three left corner. It's off the mark, and the rebound comes out to Slaughter. Yeah, Portage doing a nice job defensively on the defensive board, and Slaughter right there nails the three. Valparaiso calling a timeout. So Slaughter now with seven, his first three of the night, 15th of the campaign, and Valparaiso takes time as it was a slow start for this Indian team, but... They have woken up over the last four minutes of the lap's game time and really heated up offensively. Yeah, and they, they, you know what? They've been doing it on some great ball movement. They got some open looks. They've got, Now they're getting into the flow of their offense. Stay tuned with us for after the game when we name the player of the game presented by I-K-O-R-C-C, the Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio Region, Regional Council of Carpenters. I nailed it, huh? Rico, did I nail it? All right, all right. Thanks for the vote of confidence there. So Portage now a 21-14 edge on Valparaiso. 5.52 at a running second quarter clock. Wide open is Dalton for three left corner. Couldn't knock it down. The rebound to Del Valle of Portage. One shot now for Valparaiso. Indians with the basketball. Slaughter through the center circle. Into the offensive end. Gives to Creech. Now Garrett Clark above the arc of the right point. He's on the dribble against Michael Flynn. Right corner, Creech. Two hands a pass out to Del Valle. Much more patient offensive set for Portage the last few trips down. Slaughter, top of the wheel. Offensive foul called. They're going to get Terrell Kraft for a moving screen, trying to free up Slaughter, top of the wheel. It, so, it took Valparaiso right out of their 2-1-2 zone. They've gotten a, they got a couple easy looks on it. Took him right out of it. 21-14. Portage. Seven-point lead. Valparaiso attacking forecourt right. They get it into Jones. Spins baseline. Cut off defensively by Slaughter on the help side, and it forces Jones into a travel. Another unforced error by the Valparaiso offense. That's like their third or fourth traveling call in this, in this, this first half. Portage turning the screws defensively as Slaughter... Gets the offense in motion, plays it away to Del Valle at the left point. On the dribble against Dalton above the arc, Clark, long two. Too strong offensive rebound to Creech. He'll send a pass out left point to Slaughter above the arc. Knocked away, but Slaughter ran it down into the time stripe. Now leans into a right-handed dribble, works left around a craft ball screen. Back to his right, feeds Kraft at the foul line. Whip out pass, left corner, Clark, three ball, got it. Boy, he is three for four on the three-point line. He is red hot. He was 4 of 13 coming in, and he has 8 already tonight. 24 to 14, Portage. Brees Walls in his pocket pick momentarily, ran it back down to the time stripe, and a bounce. Right block, Connor McCall. Feeds it to a streaking Jones layup, no, but a whistle and a foul. Good move by Jones. Going, running through the lane, got a nice pass, drew the foul. 
Well, Portage is starting to open it up here a little bit with 4-12 left in the second quarter. Portage 24, Valparaiso 14. So Creech picks up the foul. That's his second of the night. Jones back to the line where he's 2 of 2, and he knocks down the first. Mason Jones now, third point of the night. Connor McCall's going to check out in favor of Adler Hasland, who comes back into the lineup for Barrett Kuhlman. Yeah, Jones has really got to step up his game offensively if they're going to get back in this game down. Down nine points. Second free throw missed off back iron, and Slaughter secures the carom in the left corner. He's going to bring it up on the dribble against the crouching defense of Brees Walls. Angles right. Had his pocket picked momentarily by Jones, but he got it back. Now feeds it post craft, wheels into the lane, up left hand. They're going to call him for steps first. There was contact, I think, Terrell Kraft. Thought there was a bit of a hand check in the back, but no sale, and he gets called for steps and the Indians give it right back over to Valpo. Yeah, Valparaiso right here. They've got to get a couple buckets here. Close this lead by the Portage Indian. The Portage really offensively is doing a nice job working the ball to the inside and drawing some fouls and taking the ball to the rack. 24-15, the Portage lead is nine. Jones, right corner on the dribble against Slaughter. Now traces the arc. Whip out pass, left side, Adler. Up top, they go to Flynn. Teardrop jumper from 15 doesn't go off back iron. The rebound controlled by Garrett Clark of the Portage Indians. He'll work up the left sideline with the right-hand dribble. Now on off, off the bounce of three, no good. Long Kieran comes out to Walls of Alpo. He goes down the left-hand side of the lane. Passes out to Hazlitt. His three ball on the left wing off the mark. Del Valle dives for the rebound, gets it to Clark. Lead feet up ahead, slaughter to the rim with the right hand, lay it in. Boy, some nice passing. Great job getting that ball up the court by the Portage Indians. They are just hust out hustling Valparaiso right now. Portage by 11. Jones down the lane against a double team. Hazlitt picked it up off the deck and put it off the window and in right of the rim. Adler has it his first two. 26-17 now. Yeah, Valparaiso needed those two points. Stop the bleeding right there. Clark runs the point this trip down. The 6-2 rookie out of bounds in the right wing. Over to Slaughter, refeeds Clark, short corner into the paint craft. Outlet over to Wellman, he'll penetrate the left baseline, draw a double, gives to Clark, down the lane, off the window and in. Garrett Clark in a season high, 10 points in their win over Lowell. He has 10 points here in the second quarter. And another turnover committed by Valparaiso gives the ball back to the Indians who lead it by 11. Yeah, Valparaiso stepped on the baseline. And they got called for the out-of-bounds. Garrett Clark, only a freshman, and he is putting on a clinic out here in the second quarter. Already equaled his season high with 2.15 still to play here in the second quarter. He has the dribble now with the right hand. No look pass to Slaughter, lays it up and in. Boy. Slaughter got loose for the deuce down low. He's in double figures with 11, and Dalton can't handle the pass out-of-bounds. Another Viking turnover. Timeout, Barrett Kuhlman. He's seen enough, and with 2.03 to play here in the second quarter, it's Portage 30, Valparaiso 17. This is the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. The team of sports medicine experts at Orthopedic Specialists of Northwest Indiana is committed to getting athletes back in the game with a focus on not only helping patients recover from injuries, but helping improve athletic performance to prevent injuries. Orthopedic Specialists provides the most advanced, comprehensive care to their patients. To learn more about all Orthopedic Specialists can do to help rehab and prevent athletic injuries, visit them on the web at osni.org or call them at 219-923-3300. Orthopedic specialists of Northwest Indiana, providing world-class care to Northwest Indiana for over 20 years. John Fitzgerald, Jay Simmons back here inside Porter High School on a Friday night. Game night in the region and the homestanding 9-1 Portage Indians with a 30-17 edge on visiting Valparaiso 203 to play here in quarter number two. You know, you, you looked at the, the schedule coming into this game and you thought, boy, Valparaiso's played a much stronger schedule. But the way they're playing right now, Portage is looking like the favorite out there. 
Garrett Clark has the basketball now for the Indians. Gives to Del Valle. Crosses over on Smiley. Down the lane. Spinning shot doesn't go. Mason Jones collars the carom for Valparaiso. Here come the Vikings. They trail it by a Baker's dozen. 30-17. Lob feed. Left side. Dalton on the dribble against Del Valle. And they're going to have a reach in foul, I believe. I'm not sure if they're going to get slaughter. Nope, they're going to get Del Valle. That'll be his first of the night. Team foul number six on Portage. Yeah, Connor but- McCall back into the lineup for Valparaiso as Blaine Dalton takes a seat on Barrett Coolman's bench. And Portage play man-to-man out of the inbounds play. Valparaiso chooses to throw it all the way down to the other end of the court, bring it up. Hazlitt carries into the offensive end against a crouching defense on Michael Wellman. Now out between the rings is Jones. Jones, the team's top scorer, has three points tonight. Pulls up from 15, rattles no. Del Valle and Smiley battle for the rebound. They're going to get Smiley for going over the back. Yeah, Mason Jones just not getting into the offense. Just a, a dribble up, stop, 15-footer. No offensive movement right there. Valparaiso really struggling offensively to get some flow. 73 seconds and a twisting second quarter clock. 30-17, Portage by 13. Left corner. Wellman, a three, went halfway down the cylinder, popped out, long rebound, back tap, still loose in the deck, and controlled by Valparaiso. Here's Jones up the near side, line moving left to right. Gives the wall, spins on Clark, in the paint, back door cut. Wellman stepped in front and took it away for Portage. Got in the passing lane. And force the turnover, and here comes Portage back right to left. They're yep. going to slow things down under a minute to play. Well, I was going to say, Wellman, great defense, great eyes on the ball right there, just able to pick off that pass. Wellman has it now between the rings to Del Valle. He's on the dribble against Hazlitt. Now Kraft over to Clark near the time stripe. Game clock in the second quarter down to 23. Kraft holds the ball on his right hip. Nearest defender, Connor McCall, about five feet away as he gets the instructions from first-year head coach Brian Klaus. Under 10 seconds, Slaughter with a touch. Now Garrett Clark, top of the wheel, on the dribble against Smiley with four. Three, Clark fires a three, and he hits it left wing. That must be his time, the last 10 seconds of each half or each quarter. He's banged home a three, which puts up. Portage 33 to 17 over the Vikings. Garrett Clark, a season high 13 points here tonight. And we are at halftime at Portage High School. The 9 and 1 Portage Indians, who went just 1 and 6 last year in the Doodland, having their way with the defending Doodland Conference champion, Valparaiso Vikings, 33 17 here at the break at Portage High School. Game night in the region of the Region Sports Network. Our halftime show comes your way after this timeout. Stay with us. This is the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Did you know? They decorate over 210,000 cakes a year. Did you know? Their butcher will cut your meat your way. Did you know? They have trained floral designers in store. Did you know? They will make your wedding cake. Did you know? They have a variety of deli bakeable entrees. Did you know? Their online app has coupons and so much more. Who does that? Strack and Van Till. Now you know. From schools to stadiums, hospitals and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. With electrical services from Economy Electric Heating and Cooling, you can radiate the perfect amount of light and energy into your home. From rewiring and code upgrades to ceiling fans, lighting, security, and more, Economy Electric Heating and Cooling's trained electricians will make sure you can enjoy your home on full power all the time. For a free estimate on electrical work, call Economy Electric Heating and Cooling at 219-923-4441, and you can visit them on the web at 4ajobdoneright.com. That's the number 4ajobdoneright.com. Hi, I'm Crowell Company's Lantern Man. I'll cover your motorcycle. 
I'll be with you on the water. I'll be with you on the snow. I'll cover your insurance needs wherever you go. I'll be at Crowl Agency from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. As Crowl Company's Lantern Man, I'm your insurance superhero. Crowl Companies, the insurance professionals in Highland, Maryville, and Michigan City. Java Wave at your local Family Express is the perfect way to get your day started or keep you moving at any time. With 12 freshly ground bean to cup flavors to choose from, Java Wave at Family Express has just what you're looking for, whether it's hot or iced coffee. To see all of the delicious flavor options and to find a Family Express near you, log on to FamilyExpress.com slash Java Wave. It's almost got it locked up. John Fitzgerald, Jay Simmons back live here at Portage High School. We're at halftime. And the homestanding Portage Indians flexing their muscles over the game's first 16 minutes. They lead visiting Valparaiso 33-17 here at the break. And this is not exactly how the pregame script <laughs> was going to lay out. But this 9-1 Portage ball club under first-year head coach Brian Klaus really believing they can win and showing it on the floor. Yeah, it, it, I think it's in not only in their shooting but their hustle on defense, their, their hustle to the offensive boards, I think is what really sets them apart right now from, from Valparaiso. Valparaiso seems to be struggling from the field. I, I think they have won three balls so far from the, from the strike, and Portage is nailing threes, and you're talking about that freshman, Garrett Clark. He's got what? Uh, he's got two threes and one. That should, was right on his feet, were right on the line. Yes, he has 13 <laughs> points, a new season high for Clark, a new career high, I should say, for the freshman. 11 points for Kamari Slaughter, which is just about right for him. He is in double figures now, sixth consecutive game, and for the ninth time in their 11 games this year, the team's top scorer, Kamari Slaughter, but it's really been Clark who's gotten some clutch buckets for this team. Yeah, he, he, seems, he seems to shine with, with less than five seconds left in the quarters. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about the fact that this Portage Indian ball club is off to their best start in over 30 years with that 9-1 and one mark coming into play today, but this Doonling Conference rivalry between Valparaiso and Portage has been a little bit more than one-sided in recent years. As a matter of fact, Valparaiso has won 24 consecutive games against Portage coming into play tonight. Well, this is going to, I'm sure, the coach, the Portage coach, the new coach has been talking about that all week, saying, hey, we've got the, we've got the, we've got a new coach here, we've got a new program. Hey, let's see if we can break the streak of 24 in a row. That's, and I'm sure there's some sectional matchups in there as there well. There were, as well as the regular season, including last year when Valparaiso ended Portage's season. Um, and a 59-53 in the Class 4, a sectional final. But the last win for the Indians in this series, you got to go back to December 7th of 2007, 48-44, an OT win at Valpo. Wow, that, that's, uh, that's dating ourselves right that, there. That's pure domination. <laughs> and yes, Portage and the Indians, under first-year head coach Brian Klaus, looking to put an end to that tonight, 33-17. And the other factor is, we obviously talked about Clark. We talked about Slaughter, both in double figures here at the break. But it's the defense of this Portage team that has really come to play today. Valparaiso has just not been in sync offensively. And, and you know what? We, we saw him get some good ball movement the first couple times down the court. And then it seemed like the Portage was just so disruptive in the pass lanes. And then when they try to take the ball to the, to the rack, that Portage collapses so fast. And they're trying to they got a couple charge calls. Mason Jones, Mason Jones is just not himself today. Just three points here at the break. All three have come from the charity stripe for Jones. He's three out of four from the line today. And the ball movement, a big part, I think, is the help side defense. The Porter has just been able to crush down on that interior of Valparaiso every time they've tried to go to the rack or feed the ball into the post. Portage has been there with an extra defender to really knock Valparaiso off their game offensively. Yeah, and it just... It's just, yeah, I think it's just pure hustle by the Portage Indians. They want this more than Valparaiso. Valparaiso seems to be a little bit lackluster right now, both offensively and defensively. Defensively, they're giving up too many offensive boards. Portage is crashing the boards, getting some easy buckets after the, after the rebound. So I, I, just, I just think right now Valparaiso just 
just seems a little lackluster. Maybe it's a little fog from uh, the Christmas break. Valparaiso averaging 62.7 points per game coming into this one today. And they just have 17 here at the break. And Portage, you look at their numbers defensively, they're just giving up 38.1 per contest defensively. And that's a pretty stout defense. And that's shown itself tonight. This is the first time I've had an opportunity to see them. But both of us. I've, been, I've been impressed by this Indian ball club today. Yeah, and like you talked about, that help side defense really forcing Valparaiso, and it just seemed like Valparaiso just out of sync the last couple possessions. You know, the last time they took a shot, Mason Jones, you know, just dribbled up and took a took a 15-footer, no movement on offense. So they just look like they are out of sync. And this has been a battle-tusted Valpo team. There are two losses on the year, both the top 20 teams in the state, including one on the road at top-ranked. Carmel, so we'll see how they respond over the game's final 16 minutes. We're going to take our final break here at halftime, and we'll have the third quarter play-by-play coming your way right after this timeout. Our count here at halftime. Portage 33, Valparaiso 17. This is game night in the region on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. The team of sports medicine experts at Orthopedic Specialists of Northwest Indiana is committed to getting athletes back in the game with a focus on not only helping patients recover from injuries, but helping improve athletic performance to prevent injuries. Orthopedic Specialists provides the most advanced, comprehensive care to their patients. To learn more about all Orthopedic Specialists can do to help rehab and prevent athletic injuries, visit them on the web at osni.org or call them at 219-923-3300 orthopedic specialists of northwest indiana providing world-class care to northwest indiana for over 20 years Blythe's Athletics in Valparaiso, whose team has been serving your team since 1959, is a leader in athletic apparel and equipment sales. Whether it's off the rack or customized to your specifications, Blythe's has the products and staff to serve you best. Trophies, embroidering, screen printing, athletic shoes, anything you're looking for, you'll find at Blythe's. Visit them today at teamblythe's.com, where the athlete shops. Alongside Jay Simmons, John Fitzgerald back here at Portage High School. Just about set for the start of the third quarter. The homestanding Indians, a 33-17 edge on visiting Valparaiso. I want to give a quick shout-out to my nephew, who's uh, a forward on the Fishers basketball team, ranked second in the state right now. They're playing Pike in the third quarter. It is 41-36, Fishers over Pike. Valpo will be at 8-0 Penn High School tomorrow. Portage will be back here, and they will host East Chicago Central for a 7 o'clock start here tomorrow night. Valparaiso, the first touch here in the second half. They attack the basket to the left. Dalton in the lane. Teardrop of the right hand is good from about 10. Blaine Dalton, who averages eight and a half per game, has points number four and five, and that opens the score in here in the third quarter. 33-19, Portage lead cut to 14. Kamari Slaughter crosses it over on Dalton, spin move in the paint, up with the right hand, left it short, and the rebound pulled off the deck by Michael Flynn of Alparaiso. Here come the Vikings quickly. Flynn to the foul line, back to the basket. Terminates a dribble, gives it to Walls. Walls penetrates left baseline. Got Garrett Clark to leave his feet. Unable to finish the layup attempt, but Clark committed the foul. And Brees Walls now of a pair of foul shots. Foul line left. Yeah, Walls, it seems like that is his forte. He loves to take that ball into the lane and draw contact. Five points on the night for Walls. 88% on the year. Tops on this ball club. And he's now one of two on the night. The announcer jinx right there. <laughs> <laughs> one more to come for Walls they've, they've got to get Mason Jones going into this offense if they, if they expect to come back in this game free throw on the way rattles and falls so Valpo has scored the first three points here in quarter number three Walls now with six points on the night 
That leads the Vikings in scoring. It's 33-20. Portage by a Baker's does it. Creech down the lane with the right hand left of the rim off a great feed from Kamari Slaughter. Creech has four. Yeah. And it's back to a 15-point lead. Yeah, Mason Jones just got there a half a second too late. Defense showing a little porousness in the lane there for the Vikings. Here's Jones up against Slaughter. Hangs in the air, left of the rim. Too strong. Creech draped with defenders. Pulls down the rebound in traffic. And a reach-in foul called against Valparaiso. Great defense by Portage on the take by Mason Jones right there. Just getting a hand in his face and making it a very difficult shot. Brees Walls commits the foul on the rebound attempt. His first, team foul number one. Here's Kraft in the lane up against Jones. Shot partially deflected. Creech got the offensive rebound. Fades fires from five off the mark. And the rebound picked off the deck by Connor McCall. Here comes Valpo. Dalton left of the key. Jump stop in the paint against a double team. And he step walked. Another turnover. Good job of defense. Help side defense right there. On the take by Valparaiso. Just nowhere to go for Dalton. Indians have been doing it all night long. A little three-quarter court pressure as they extend the defense to the Vikings. Portage on offense. Left to right here in the third quarter. Here's Wellman all the way to the rim. Lost it on his way up. But they're going to get a blocking foul on Brees Walls. Walls played in his case. Wellman, I think, might have actually lost control of that basketball before contact was made. Yeah, that's what I thought. It, the, he was out of control. The ball was already hitting the floor. Should have been a no call. So the foul on Walls, his second of the night. Not a shooting foul. They'll inbound as Portage, who leads it by 15, 35, 20. Garrett Clark. And I believe they're going to call a moving screen yes. on Terrell Kraft. He was trying to free Garrett Clark. Foul on Kraft is his second. Team foul number two on Portage here in quarter number three. And Valpo back on offense. Right to left, they trail it by 15. And Valpo, again, just standing around. They've got to get some ball movement. Dalton takes it to the rim with a right hand. Scoops and scores. And is an opportunity now for a three-point hit. He went right down the heart of the Portage defense down the lane. Dalton with seven. He'll go to the line looking to make it eight. Del Valle back into the lineup for Portage. He's going to replace Wellman. Yeah, Wellman pick up the second foul right there. Dalton a perfect 11 for 11 from the stripe this year. All right, there you go. No jinx. <laughs> Dalton has eight. He converts a three-point play, 35-23. Good pressure applied by Valparaiso on backcourt, but they get it ahead to Del Valle, whose pass is picked off, trying to find Creech on the right block. But Flynn stepped in front and took it away. Vikings open look for Jones straight on, no good. And the rebound in traffic pulled down by Creech, and he is fouled in the rebound attempt. You know, it's a lost art in today's game. Mason Jones, if he would have fouled his shot, there was nobody in the lane. He could have gotten his own rebound and put it back That's in. That's a great point. So against full court pressure, applied by the Vikings. Portage gets it in in backcourt slaughter. Lead feed broken up by Jones and into the hands of Brees Walls. And a reach-in foul called against Portage. So that full court defense showing to be a little bit tough for Portage to handle here in the third quarter. Yeah, two, two times they've tried to get down the court, and two times they've caused, had turnovers. You know, with that full court pressure, Valparaiso is just trying to pick up the, the pace of the game. It seems to be stagnant a little bit. So Slaughter picks up his first. Valparaiso the basketball. Here's Flynn out front straight away to McCall. Spoon feeds Jones, who works down the lane, blocked away. I believe Slaughter got his left hand on it. Up ahead, Del Valle. Del Valle crossing over, works left around the craft ball screen. Telegraph to pack, broken up by Dalton, all the way to the rim with the right hand, lays it up and in. The steal and the layup at the other end by Blaine Dalton, who's in double figures with 10. We got a timeout by the Portage Indians. And Brian Klaus takes time with 4.43 to go here in quarter number three. Dalton, the steal, and the layup at the other end. He now has 10. It'll be a 30-second timeout. We'll keep it right here. 35-25.
The steal and the layup pulls Valparaiso back within 10. Yeah, it just, Portage looks like they're a little disorganized on that, that press breaker and two turnovers in a row for the Portage Indians. They, the coach has got to be drawing it up right now. Here's what I want you to do. It's got to be sharper, crisper passes. They seem to be telegraphing everything they're trying to throw down the court. And don't forget tonight, at the end of tonight's game, we will be naming the Blue Collar Player of the Game. The naming rights of that is the Region Sports Network Blue Collar Player of the Game. 4.43 to go here in quarter number three. 35-25. Portage by 10, but the tenor of this gymnasium is that Portage lead is very tenuous right now as Valparaiso with another steal. Dalton up ahead to Hazlitt in the paint. Spoon feeds it for Walls in front of the rim. Can't finish the layup attempt in traffic. Kraft the rebound, knocked to the ground, and a foul called. Looks like it's going to be on Mason Jones. That's going to be, I think it's going to be his second. It is the second of the night on Mason Jones, Valparaiso's top scorer, who has three points tonight, averaging 16.2 didn't, didn't coming look into like, play. Didn't look like he caused the foul. He was maybe behind, and he just happened to be in the neighborhood, and they had two guys to pick from, and they picked Mason Jones. So Portage the basketball, a 10-point advantage with 424 and a stop clock here in quarter number three. Slaughtered inbound. Inbounds pass contested by Dalton. They get it in backcourt. Picks Sam up the ball. Wellman in backcourt still to slaughter. Breaks it ahead. Garrett Clark. Lob feed low left to Kraft. Didn't put enough, enough oomph on it. And Jones able to take it away. Here comes Valparaiso right to left. Walls pitches a pass to Dalton. Dribble to the foul line. Down the lane. Up left hand. Shot doesn't go, but a whistle and a foul called. Dalton really pushing that pace and going hard in the backpedaling defensive portage. This time, Garrett Clark, who's going to pick up his third foul with 4.02, still to play in quarter number three. Think about it, we've played almost half of the third quarter, and Portage has yet to score a point. Dalton knocks down the first. One more to come. He has 11. That's team high honors so far. Yeah, Portage offensively has just come to a grind. Well, you don't, when you don't get any shots because you have turnovers all the time, it really, it really slows down your scoring. And that, that really hurt Valparaiso in the opening two quarters. Yes. Second one by Dalton, nothing but net. So a dozen for Dalton. Career high was 17 this year. He had against 21st century. Another turn. Slaughter bobbles the dribble. Ball's oh. loose. Slaughter somehow got it back, draped with defenders, and now controls and re-racks the offense in the half court. Slaughter has a pick from Kraft. Nowhere to go. Here comes the double. He'll two-hand a pass out front. Grant Clark now with the basketball. and dribble against Dalton. Lost it. Creech was there. They're going to say last touch by Dalton. And boy, Portage lucked out. They lost total control of the basketball. It's twice on one possession they've lost control of the ball, and it's gone their way. So Portage went down far sideline. Quarter court in the offensive zone. They lead it by 8, 35-27. 3.35 to play. Lob feed in backcourt to Kamari Slaughter. They'll pound the right-hand staccato. Hip-high bounce into the offensive end through the Indian head logo. High on the left. Clark, high dribble out of control, finally able to play it away to Creech. He'll alternate hands on the dribble against Hazlitt, work right around the craft ball screen, back to his left, left of the key. Feeds it for Wellman, ball deflected out by Walls, out of bounds. It'll stay with Portage. Yeah, Portage right here, this uh, possession's lasted about 40 seconds, but yet they have not gotten a shot off. The Valparaiso defense has definitely stepped it up. I'd like to know what the coach said at halftime to get this kind of intensity out here, especially on a defensive end. They haven't even gotten all that close to the cylinder. <laughs> As Slaughter inbounds underneath the Kraft and a reach and foul committed by Valparaiso. Kraft got the basketball against Jones and Hazlitt, who had formed the double team low on the right block. Hazlitt picks up the foul. That's his first of the night. Team foul number five. So this time, baseline left. It'll be Slaughter. Triggers in. Contested by Brooks. A lob feed. He overthrew everybody. Trying to find Creech. 
Walls takes it away into the forecourt against the backpedaling defense of Grant Clark. And Clark commits the foul in transition. Now that's the sixth team foul on Portage Indians. Valparaiso with five. A lot of fouls being racked up here early in this third quarter. As Jay said, number six here in quarter number three, called against Portage, who leads it by eight, 35-27. Lob feed into Jones, turns on Slaughter, who rejects his shot, falls loose in the deck, and taken off the hardwood by Grant Clark, but Jones tied him up. Jones in we, frustration right there. Oh, we there got a foul. On it's, Jones. It's going to be his third, it looks like. Yep. He is frustrated out there, big time. Great rejection on the ball by Slaughter. I think coach has got to get him out. Sit him down for a minute. They've been doing fine without him. They're going to take him out of the game right here. Dalton's going to no. come in, and he's going to get Brees Walls, the point guard. They faked me out on that one. So now it's Brooks, Hazlitt, Dalton, Jones, and Smiley, the five on the floor for Valparaiso. Portage gets it in. Slaughter. Into the offensive end. Touch pass to Kraft. Reverse layup. Wild shot. Does it go off Dalton out of bounds? No, they're going to say last touch by Portage. I thought that went off Dalton. I did too. But if you notice, Mason Jones on that play defensively bailed completely out of the lane. He saw that. He saw the defense, offensive player coming and just bailed out. He, he knows he's got to play smart here until the end of this quarter. Here's Brooks in the left-hand dribble to the foul line. Plays it above the arc over to Smiley right side. Smiley drives on Wellman. Teardrop left hand. Good. Counter to the foul. Oh, my. That Smiley, the rookie guard, almost put it up from his hip with the left hand. Got it to fall. He has four. Valpo back within six. With 2.35 to go and smiling to the line where he's 11 of 12 in the year, a 92% clip. Make it 12 of 13. The left-hander knocks down the three-point play. He has five. And this is a five-point game. Portage has been shut out in the third quarter. It's, that's amazing. 35-30. Creech, low right, layup, oh. good. Counted and the foul. And right on cue, <laughs> a three-point opportunity as Portage wakes up, breaks pressure, Textbook style. Creech has points number five and six and will go to the line looking to convert the three-point play. Foul cold on Hazlitt, his second of the night. But that that's you just you just read it perfectly. Textbook. They got the ball to the lane and pass it across the court. And that's the first time they've done that against the press. Very north and south with their passing, their crisp passing. Yes. Not east-west dribbles, which has plagued them so far. So the lead for Portage is 8. 38-32-19 to play quarter number three here in Portage. Smiley, dribble drive on the right baseline. Elbow jumper on the way by Walls. Got a benevolent bounce and it fell through. Hit the iron a few times. Walls has 8. And Valpo answers to pull back within 6. Lob feet almost broke it up. Wellman has it. They give it to Creech who lays it up and in. Great feed by Kraft to find Creech, who has nine points here tonight, and it's 40-32 Portage. Yeah, very unselfish right there. He could have taken that one to the basket easily, but found a more wide-open guy. Smiley on the dribble. And Sam Wellman might have gotten away with a walk in the left point. Gives it straight away to Jones. Head and shoulder fake. In the right corner, Hazlitt. He'll pitch it up top to Jones, put the ball on the deck. Euro stepped on the lane and lays it in with the right hand right of the rim. Got by Creech. Got got some points on the board for Mason. He has been frustrated out there this game. Jones' first field goal of the night comes with 117 to play in the third quarter. Right up to this point, all his points have come from the free throw strike. 40-34 our count. Portage, a six-point edge in the rock. Slaughter out near the time stripe of the yo-yo right-hand dribble. Dalton comes out to play him. Under a minute to play, quarter number three. Slaughter between the legs of the dribble, works right around a Kraft pick, now back to his left. Shakes and bakes, top of the circle, leaves it for Kraft, low left, layup, good with the left hand. Slaughter just kind of lulled the defense to sleep, found Kraft who got loose for the deuce. Kraft has six, and it's 42-34, an eight-point edge. Jones, elbow jumper from 15, well off the mark. Dalton, the offensive rebound, stripped from behind, but into the hands of Brees Walls. Walls feeds Jones low right, and Jones puts it off the window and in for points number six and seven. Yeah, Jones this time did a little head fake, got the defender up in the air, 
other, of the couple other times that he's gotten his uh, shots blocked, he's just gone straight up with it. 42-36, Portage by six. Nine seconds in a twisting third quarter clock. Slaughter out near the time stripe with five. Four to the foul line. Lays it up. Rims no. Second chance no. Wellman's jumper at the horn. Rims out from the elbow. And we have played three quarters here at Portage High School. The home standing Indians head to the fourth quarter with a 42-36 lead on Valparaiso. We're back with the fourth quarter after this timeout. This is game night in the region on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Did you know? Wow, they'll prepare fresh fish while you wait. Did you know? They make over 40,000 donuts from scratch every week? Did you know? They offer 23 different deli platters for your party? Did you know? They have freshly chopped fajita mix ready to cook. Did you know? They have the best fried chicken in the area? Did you know? They offer our signature curbside service 14 hours a day. Strike and Van Till, now you know. 29. John Fitzgerald, Jay Simmons back here inside Portage High School. Hey, John, we, 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 you know, this is a day that'll live in infamy. It's uh, Rich Castillo's birthday. Rich, happy birthday. Glad you could be here with us on your birthday. What a way to spend your birthday. Yeah, with, with your the 25th birthday, and this is where you're spending it. <laughs> happy birthday, Rico. Maybe times two. <laughs> you said it, I didn't. Eight minutes on the clock, and we're set. Let's play some basketball here in quarter number four. 42 36. The Indians at nine and one have a six point edge on nine and two. Valparaiso in the Dune Link Conference opener, and a whistle to foul off the basketball as Del Valle got tangled up with Mason Jones off the ball. It's going to be the eighth foul here in the second half against Portage. They're going to get Del Valle. That's going to be his second of the night. Yeah. So Valparaiso, who really flexed their muscles to get back in this ball game in the third quarter, forces a turnover on the opening possession by Portage. Yeah, Portage six points so far in the second half. They have struggled. Their defense has still been tight, though. Walls tried to thread a needle, broken up. Walls got it back. Extra pass Jones, and shoulder fake left of the key, leaves it down low. Offensive foul called, and for the second time tonight, Terrell Kraft dug in and took a charge. And that's the fourth foul, more importantly, on the top scorer for the Vikings, Mason Jones, who picks up number four, and he's going to check out with seven points here on the night. He has been. Or nothing. will he? He will check out as Adler Haslett, the 6 1 senior, comes in to replace him. So a smaller lineup now for Valpo. He has definitely played very frustrated throughout the night, but you've got to contribute that to the Portage defense. Del Valle into the forecourt. Plays it away. Garrett Clark. Now Del Valle at the right hash. Works left around a craft ball screen on the dribble against Haslett. Dancing, gives to Garrett Clark above the arc on the left side. Now Creech on the right side. Rolls to the foul line, penetrates, gives the slaughter offensive foul call. They're going to get Kraft. I believe it was Walls who dug in and took the charge in the paint. Yeah, Kraft's got to, if, he's gonna, if he knows he's going to pass that ball, he's got to stop one step sooner. Check that. They're going to call that on Creech, so that's going to be... It's his third. That is his third. They had him up for a second with one, but I had him for three. So the third foul of the night for Creech. And Portage has not taken a shot yet here in this fourth quarter in two possessions. They lead it by six, 42-36. Valparaiso, the basketballs, Hazlitt handles out hot. Now a Dalton foul on extended left, cut off, plays it above the arc to Flynn, who fires a three and hits. Wow, nothing but bottom of the well on that one. Michael Flynn, a 26% three ball shooter, 9 of 35 coming in, and he splashes down his first of the night. Tenth of the campaign. Valpo back within three. Creech low left layup, good. Off the feed from Slaughter. Creech now with 11, one shy of his season high. Yeah, Creech, good job of ball movement. And then Slaughter took it to the lane and saw the diagonal pass across the lane and wide open layup. Five-point lead for Portage. 44-39, under six minutes to play fourth quarter. Dalton runner in the lane, upright hand. High Arker doesn't go. Got his own rebound. 
plays it above the Hazlitt. Left point, three is good, and Valpo's back with it a deuce. 44-42, yeah. Hazlitt, his 14th three ball of the year. He has five tonight. Valparaiso on fire from the three-point line the last two possessions. Poor Portage 44, Valparaiso 42. Indians the basketball. Del Valle works the dribble out. I go to buy Hazlitt. Crosses over. Now works down to the right point. A flip out near the time stripe to Slaughter. He draws Dalton defensively. Portage in no hurry offensively in the half court game. Works left toward the time stripe. Terminates a dribble and gets a bounce for Kraft. Lob feed caught by Slaughter. Low right layup. Rimmed out. Weak shot. Rebound. Hazlitt kept his feet and Valpo comes away. Slaughtered a great look. Couldn't finish. Right corner three on the way. Too strong this time out of the hands of Flynn. Weak shot. Rebound to Walls. They'll re-rack the half court offense. Out front. Hazlitt. His three ball. Remy no. Del Valle the rebound for Portage and he's fouled. Great looks by Valparaiso. But none of them have been able to fall this trip down, but now a two-point ball game. Yep, and it looks like it's going to be a one-and-one one for the Portage Indians. And it, now you see Mason Jones back in the game. I, I think this might be too early for him. 444 still to play. I mean, you're down only two. Your offense has been doing pretty good without him. You know, I, I, I just think it's too early. But he's a smart player. He's going he's gonna to realize he can't take that ball to the hole. He's going to have to back out a little bit defensively. He's, he's going he's gonna to be smart about it. Del Valle misses the one-on-one one opportunity in the front end. Portage 44, Valparaiso 42, 434 to go. Fourth quarter. Here's Michael Flynn. Left point. Top of the circle now McCall. On the right side they go Hazlitt. Short corner right is Jones back to the basket. Plays it away to Walls. On the dribble against Del Valle. Around to the left now McCall. Walls penetrates, drives on Del Valle, and it's going to be a backpedaling defensive block called against Del Valle, I believe. Trying to stop the aggressive penetration of Brees Walls. Del Valle picks up the foul, his third of the night. Now, is this going to be their 10th team foul, or is this the ninth? This should be their ninth, if I'm not mistaken. And the Should be a one-on-one one opportunity still. Yeah, official double-checking. And it's good. They're, they're oh, putting on the board. Me. They're on, they're putting it up there, 10. Good job by the official to double-check and make sure it was 10 fouls. Nice job by the officiating crew. So a two-shot opportunity for Brees Walls, the top free-throw shooter on this Valpo ball club. Deep knee bend, flick of the wrist, and the first one falls. So nine now for Brees Walls. He's been in double figures six times so far this year. Second free throw. He sends it. It's good. He has 10. Seventh time he's been in double figures. And Valparaiso has drawn even with the house at 44 apiece (laughs) with 4.13 to play here in the fourth quarter. Brian Klaus takes time. And we have the makings of an outstanding one down the stretch. 4.13 to go, fourth quarter here in Portage. Indians and Vikings tied at 44 apiece. This is game night in the region on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. From schools to stadiums, hospitals and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. The Doodling Conference opener coming down to the wire, and it has been an outstanding opener here tonight. A back-and-forth affair. Valpo jumped out to the early lead. The homestanding Portage Indians really took a lead here at the break, but a huge third quarter erased a 35-17 Portage lead at the break and a huge third quarter by the Vikings. And now midway through the fourth, we are tied at 44 apiece. Portage the basketball moving left to right. You know what? Valparaiso came back not because of their offense, 
but because of that great defense, that, ha- that full court press really turned this momentum of this game around. Kraft two hands a pass over to Slaughter on the left point. He takes it toward the top of the wheel. Against the man-to-man defense of Walls across the lane, feeds Creech, lays it up off the window and in. A little bit too much play side help and a wide open break right here. 13 now for Creech, a new season high. Here's Flynn in the right corner. Valparaiso now down by two. Jones head of the key, Haslett left corner on the dribble against Kraft. Terminates the dribble at the elbow. Plays it away to Walls, drives on Clark. Can't get loose, low left. Whip out pass, hit the back side of the backboard out of bounds. And Portage defense forces a turnover by Valparaiso. Yeah, Haslett had the ball under the basket right off the uh, Right after the basket was made, they made a nice couple passes down the court. Haslett had the ball underneath the basket, should have taken it up strong, draw the foul. So Dalton comes back into the game for Valparaiso. They unveil full court pressure, slaughter in backcourt. Jump pass up ahead, Creech. Creech across the lane to Kraft, layup, no, left it short, but there was contact. And Terrell Kraft is going to go to the line for a pair of foul shots. Yeah, it looked like Hazlitt came up from behind and tripped him up a little bit. Foul was on Hazlitt. That's going to be his third of the night. And another good job once they got into slaughter to find Creech and then Kraft across the lane from right to left to break that full court press. So a two point lead for the Indians. Kraft to the line, foul line right, just 42% on the year, and he misses the first. I think this is going to be a little. Well, anytime he touches the ball, you might want to foul him with that 42%. He is the lowest on this ball club of their regulars. Second one rolls out. Jones the rebound. So an 0 of 2 trip and an empty trip to the line for Terrell Kraft. And our score stays Portage 46, Valparaiso 44. Dalton to Walls. Spin move in the lane. Pushed it up right hand. Good work, Todd, at 46. Brees Walls with a dozen. 46-46 tie. Just under three minutes to play fourth quarter. Here's Del Valle. Leans into a right-hand dribble. Guarded by Hazlitt. It's Portage attacks four quarter right. Slaughter out near the time stripe. Two hands a pass. Jones broke it up. Creech runs it down and saves the possession for the Indians. Yeah. Up ahead, Del Valle. Back over to Slaughter. He's straight away. 46-46 tie. Slaughter matched up with Dalton. Kills the dribble. Plays it ahead. Left hash mark over to Del Valle to the foul line. Down the lane. In traffic. Layup. Left it short. Back tap. And into the hands of Connor McCall of Valparaiso. Up ahead. Brees Walls now on offense. Tied at 46. They feed the post. Jones. Whip out pass. McCall finds Dalton. Lob feed Jones against the double team. Ball knocked away by Kraft. And into the hands of Garrett Clark of Portage. Well, just an ill-advised pass. Jones just double coverage right on top of him. There was nowhere for him to go with that ball. Just a bad pass. He had a better look moments before in the paint. Clark pull up jumper well off the mark. Rebound saved by Kraft into the hands of Slaughter. Rising a three. Missed that too strong. But nobody boxed out Clark and he resets the offense. For yeah. Portage with 90 seconds to play, and we're tied at 46. And yeah, both teams in the double bonus, and the possession arrow goes to Valparaiso. And Brian Klaus takes time. It'll be a full timeout. We'll take it with them. A minute 22 to play fourth quarter here at Portage. The Indians and the Vikings tied at 46 apiece. This is game night in the region. On the Region Sports Network, the only game in town team of sports medicine experts and orthopedic specialists of Northwest Indiana is committed to getting athletes back in the game with a focus on not only helping patients recover from injuries, but helping improve athletic performance to prevent injuries. Orthopedic specialists provides the most advanced, comprehensive care to their patients. To learn more about all orthopedic specialists can do to help rehab and prevent athletic injuries, visit them on the web at OSNI.org or call them at 219-923-3300. Orthopedic specialists of Northwest Indiana, providing world-class care to Northwest Indiana for over 20 years. The game night in the region on the Region Sports Network is brought to you by Economy Electric Heating and Cooling. Economy Electric Heating and Cooling. 
with a 24-7 emergency service, comfort isn't far away. Alongside Jay Simmons, John Fitzgerald, one minute and 22 seconds remain here in the fourth quarter, the Doodling Conference opener. And the renewal of a rivalry that has been well one-sided in favor of Valparaiso, but the Portage Indians at 9-1, and one, and the 9-2 and two Valpo Vikings tied at 46. Well, it looks like he's going to hold it here for the last shot. It's a long time to be holding it, making crisp passes here. See if they can find a Valparaiso defense falling asleep on the backside here. Get a cutter coming Six, through. 66 seconds now for the fourth quarter. Del Valle handles the dribble outside. Foul him. Gives to Kraft. Quickly gives it away to Clark. Jump pass above the arc to Slaughter. He stands left point guarded by Dalton. And Brian Klaus wants to take another timeout. It's going to be a full timeout as well with 53 seconds to go in this fourth quarter. We'll step out. Todd at 46. Game night in the region on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Hi, I'm Crowell Company's Lantern Man. I'll cover your motorcycle. I'll be with you on the water. I'll be with you on the snow. I'll cover your insurance needs wherever you go. I'll be at Crowell Agency from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. As Crowell Company's Lantern Man, I'm your insurance superhero. Crowell Company's the insurance professionals in Highland, Maryville, and Michigan City. Fifty-three ticks of the clock remain. Fourth quarter here inside Portage High School. Good crowd on hand for this Doodling Conference opener. Valparaiso and the Portage Indians tied at 46 apiece. Hey, don't forget at tonight at the conclusion of tonight's game, be named the Crowl Lantern Man Superhero of the Game. Our insurance superheroes. So Portage the basketball, 53 seconds left. Garrett Clark lobs it in backcourt. Caught by Kamari Slaughter who has 11 points tonight, works into the offensive end, guarded by Dalton. Here's Creech between the circles. Gives to Garrett Clark on the dribble, hounded by Walls, and a reach-in foul called on Brees Walls. I was going to say, you, you notice Terrell Kraft is not out there. We talked about him with, between me and you over the break. A 40% free throw shooter. They took him out of the game. Good call right there by the coach. So... Barrett Kuhlman takes time before the foul shot occurs. 40 and one tenth remaining in a 46-46 tie. And Garrett Clark set to go to the line. The 6-2 freshman who has a team high 13 points for the Indians tonight. But I think you can argue that 13 points, season high for him. These are probably the two biggest free throws he's taken in an Indian uniform so far <laughs> being just a freshman. Yes, it is. You know what? He's going to feel a lot of pressure as a freshman. This is more people than he's ever played in front of in his entire life. Great time out by Barrett Coleman yep, at I this point to try to ice Garrett Clark before his two foul shots and the double bonus here. Foul was on Brees Walls of Valparaiso, his fourth of the night. Then I'm sure he wanted to set a play up with 40 seconds left, try to hold the ball and try and get a you know get an easy bucket. First free throw by Clark is too strong off back iron. He'll have one more to come. He's 5 of 9 in the campaign from the charity stripe. A season high 13 points. Deep knee bend. Flick of the wrist. Second one's good. Portage leads by 1. 14 for Clark. 47-46. 35 seconds of a twisting fourth quarter clock. Dalton top of the circle. He's matched up with Devalier. Now Hazlitt, left point, feed the post, Jones, turns on Slaughter, Slaughter blocked it away, Jones got it back in front of the rim, and knocked it through, Jones has nine, Valpo by one. Biggest two points of the game for him all night long. 14 seconds for the ball game, Del Valle looking to make a move, but Brian Klaus wants to take time and talk about this final, potentially final offensive possession as Valparaiso, the visitors, with a 48-47 lead on homestanding Portage with 13 and 6 tenths remaining here in this fourth quarter. 
It was 35-17, Portage at the break. And that's Portage's last time out, so it's going to be make or break right here for the Indians. I, I, th I think you got to get the ball to Slaughter and let him drive the lane and then either A, take the shot, or B, hit somebody cutting through the lane. Because it seems like Valparaiso, defensively, they overplay from the weak side, and it all, it's been leaving that backside cutter wide open all night long. They've, they've had a ton of luck going down low in that combination of Creech and Kraft across the lane, feeding it to each other once Slaughter gets the initial entry pass in. Keep yeah, in mind for Jones, he's going to be on the floor with four personal fouls here. Hey. So you would think they'll go inside. Yeah, and plus he's got to go after with four fouls at this point in the game. But you know Kraft is not going to be on the floor. 40% so, free throw shooter, he is not going to be on the floor because if, if the coaches knew that he was on the floor, they would follow him as soon as he touched the ball. So Valpo breaks, settle with McCall, Hazlitt, Jones, Dalton, and Walls. Portage to inbound of the form of Michael Wellman right in front of their own bench. 13 and 6 tenths remain. Slaughter couldn't handle the pass. McCall comes up with it, and a foul committed by Portage. Looked like Slaughter might have taken his hand off the, his eye off the pass, but I think Roman tried to force and thread a needle that wasn't needed at that point. Yeah, it's just an ill-advised pass, but at that point in time, they had to get the ball in because, again, Portage was out of timeouts. So Connor McCall, a 6'4 junior for Valparaiso to the line, foul line left. He is 0 for 1 from the stripe this year. Deep knee bend. Free throw, good. 49-47, Valparaiso by two. McCall, one more foul shot to come. That's his first point of the night. McCall with ice in his veins right now. Shooting into the Portage band up top. Second one, good again. Two big-time foul shots by Connor McCall. Makes this a three-point game. Valparaiso takes time. It'll be a full timeout. We'll keep it right here with 11 and 5 tenths remaining. And the visiting Vikings, a 50-47 edge on Portage. Stay with us after the game. We'll be naming the play of the game. Presented by I-K-O-R-C-C. Build your future with I-K-O-R-C-C. That'll be the play of the game. We're going to have to come up with something here for that one. There's a lot of big plays throughout this game, especially down the stretch here. And we still have 11 and 5 tenths remaining in a ball game that the Portage Indians owned over the first 16 minutes. Yeah, dominated. 35-17 lead at the break. Valparaiso really turned the screws defensively in quarter number three, worked their way back in, eventually tied this at 46 apiece. And now the visiting Vikings with a 40, I'm sorry, 50-47 edge on the homestanding Portage Indians. Well, I would love to have been a fly on the wall to see what Coach Coleman, or Coleman, I'm sorry, Coleman said at halftime because it has been a different Valparaiso team, especially defensively. They came out and had a streak of a couple threes in a row that really brought them back, but it's been the defensive pressure for the Vikings. Valpo has outscored Portage 33-12 to here since halftime. They now lead it by 350-47. to Full court pressure applied. Portage needs a three. Del Valle pass broken up, saved by Jones. Into the hands of Wellman, a whistle and a foul called first. They're going to say, I actually I believe they're going to say Jones might have stepped Got on the end line. Five so seconds five left. seconds left. Portage still down three. They'll inbound baseline left. And you got to get the ball into Garrett Clark's hand right here for the wide open three. Slaughter will trigger it in. Inbounds pass contested by Dalton. Slaughter looking, looking, gets it in. Dalton knocked it away out of bounds. We're going to say five tenths of a second went off the clock. Slaughter Good job defeated by the, it in once again. Good this job by the clock, man. Sorry. In a tougher corner. Slaughter looking to play it in. Lob feet up top. Broken up by Walls. Run down by Lavalier. Two seconds left. One second from half court. Lavalier's three ball no good. And Valparaiso has won the Doodling Conference opener in comeback fashion. 50-47. to 47. They extend their winning streak over the Indians to 25 consecutive games. As Barrett Kuhlman's ball club rebounds. 
from a 18 point halftime deficit to win the conference opener 50 to 47 here tonight at Portage with the win Valparaiso now 10 and 2 on the campaign to Portage sees their eight game winning streak come to an end the Indians fall to 9 and 2 post game shows going to come your way right after this timeout 50 to 47 the final of Valparaiso victory here at Portage. This is game night in the region. On the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Hi, I'm Crowell Company's Lantern Man. I'll cover your motorcycle. I'll be with you on the water. I'll be with you on the snow. I'll cover your insurance needs wherever you go. I'll be at Crowell Agency from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. As Crowell Company's Lantern Man, I'm your insurance superhero. Crowell Company's the insurance professionals in Highland, Maryville, and Michigan City. From schools to stadiums, hospitals, and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. Did you know? They decorate over 210,000 cakes a year. Did you know? Their butcher will cut your meat your way. Did you know? They have trained floral designers in store. Did you know? They will make your wedding cake. Did you know? They have a variety of deli bakeable entrees. Did you know? Their online app has coupons and so much more. Who does that? Strack and Van Till. Now you know. Java Wave at your local Family Express is the perfect way to get your day started or keep you moving at any time. With 12 freshly ground bean-to-cup flavors to choose from, Java Wave at Family Express has just what you're looking for, whether it's hot or iced coffee. To see all of the delicious flavor options, and to find a Family Express near you, log on to FamilyExpress.com slash Java Wave. Blythe's Athletics in Valparaiso, whose team has been serving your team since 1959, is a leader in athletic apparel and equipment sales. Whether it's off the rack or customized to your specifications, Blythe's has the products and staff to serve you best. Trophies, embroidering, screen printing, athletic shoes, anything you're looking for, you'll find at Blythe's. Visit them today at teamblythes.com, where the athlete shops. The team of sports medicine experts at Orthopedic Specialists of Northwest Indiana is committed to getting athletes back in the game with a focus on not only helping patients recover from injuries, but helping improve athletic performance to prevent injuries. Orthopedic Specialists provides the most advanced, comprehensive care to their patients. To learn more about all Orthopedic Specialists can do to help rehab and prevent athletic injuries, visit them on the web at OSNI.org or call them at 219-923-3300. Orthopedic Specialists of Northwest Indiana, providing world-class care to Northwest Indiana for over 20 years. Alongside Jay Simmons, John Fitzgerald back here inside Portage High School, the doodling conference opener. The Valparaiso Vikings now 10-2 after an impressive come from behind 50-47 win over the Portage Indians here on the home hardwood. Portage sees their eight-game winning streak come to an end there now 9-2. Valparaiso improves to 10-2. And they did it with defense, especially in the second half. Yeah, that, that full court press caught Portage completely by surprise. I, I, I want to say at least eight possessions in a row, Portage came away without a shot. They went, they went four min, five minutes in the third quarter without scoring a point. And I, I think they may have grazed the rim once. In yeah, that time. I, and I, that's not an exaggeration. Uh, really a tale of two halves. So much dominated by Portage. 
Yeah, the first. 35-17 at the break. The Indians enjoying the 18-point lead. Valparaiso outscoring Portage 33-12 down the stretch to win it here on the visiting team. Home hardwood, so Valparaiso wins the Duneland Conference opener. Portage has a lot to still be proud about, though. This was this was a ball club in a series uh, which now belongs to Valparaiso with 25 consecutive wins over Portage, but Portage should hold their head pretty high after this one. It was an impressive at times. It just, unfortunately, the defense of Alpo took over control in that second half. Yeah, defensively, Valparaiso played great in the second half. Offensively, Valparaiso really struggled, and their, st- their top scorer, Mason Jones, really struggled tonight, had a big bucket towards the end to, to take the lead. But other than that, he was pretty much disappeared out there offensively for the Valparaiso Vikings. It just seemed like it was more of a team effort offensively than a Mason Jones show. He he really, you know what, he just seemed like he was out of sort. And when he got the ball on the block, there was two defenders on him. Great job defensively, great job of scheming defensively to have, Absolutely. Brought, to have two men on him. And every time he, he went up, he was getting his shot blocked. He's got to, you know, he's got to go up and under or something like that. But he's he's got to come up with another move. He just can't take that ball straight to the basket, especially as athletic a team as the as the Portage Indians. So Valparaiso now is going to go on the road tomorrow night, nine conference, and they're going to get tested again. A perfect eight no pen ball club on the road tomorrow, six thirty start time. Portage is going to have to lick their wounds. They step out of conference play. And they're right back here on the home hardwood tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, when they take on East Chicago Central. Now time to pass out some of our post-game awards and hardware tonight. It's time to name the Crowell Company's Lantern Man Superhero of the Game, presented by Crowell Companies. They have offices open from 9 to 7, Monday through Friday, and Saturday till 2 p.m. at Highland, Maryville, and Michigan City. And, Jay, our Crowell Company's Lantern Man Superhero of the Game tonight is the freshman from the Portage Indians. That is Garrett Clark. He brought them to life. He had a three-pointer at the end of the first quarter, a three-pointer at the end of the second quarter. He really shined with less than five, <laughs> five seconds left in the, ha- in the quarters. And, you know, we talked about it. Why didn't the coach call timeout at the end of the third quarter and bring him in for, <laughs> <laughs> to make it a trifecta? But a great job for the freshman offensively and setting the offense. Did a great job coming off the bench. He truly brought the Portage Indians alive in that second quarter. Garrett Clark, a career-high 14 points tonight in the losing effort for Portage. That is our Lantern Man superhero of the game presented by the Crowell Companies. Proud to recognize the superheroes on the basketball court. Moving on, the IKORCC play of the game tonight as we present that by IKORCC, the Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio Regional Council of Carpenters. You got this one. And that was late in the fourth quarter with about two minutes to go. Valparaiso battling all the way back, and it started with a defensive steal in the paint and resulted in a Dalton layup attempt for his 12th point of the night to draw Valparaiso even with the house and come all the way back from 18 down at the break. And that really set the, it was defense which turned into offense, which was really the tail of the tape here in the second half for Valparaiso. That is our IKORCC play of the game presented by the Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio Regional Council of Carpenters, training professionalism and partnership for economic development. Finally, time to name the Region Sports Network Blue Collar Player of the Game, brought to you by the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. And the player of the game tonight, Jay? And we're going to go with two tonight. We got Blaine Dalton with 12 points, and we have. And Brees Walls, the point guard, who came in second in the region in assists, a team high 5.8, but he had 12 points tonight, seventh time he's been in double figures. Yeah, great job by the pair of them. They, they sort of picked up the when – they, when they saw Mason Jones struggling offensively, they had to pick up the, the offense, and they did a great job of it. Credits for this one tonight. Our executive producer on the Region Sports Network, Mr. Chris Ramirez, coordinating producer, 
is Nathan Laird, our game producer tonight. The birthday boy, Rich Castillo <laughs> here at Portage High School. Bob Guerrero handling our video. Special thanks, as always, to the athletic directors and the athletic staff of these two institutions. Mike Pointer and Fred Joseph for Portage High School. Brian Klaus, Barrett Kuhlman, the head coaches for both Portage and Valpo and our viewers tonight on regionsports.com as well as facebook.com slash regionsports. So we had a good one to start off the Doonland Conference play tonight, back and forth in a rivalry showdown, and Valparaiso comes away victorious 50-47, to and hopefully the rest of the campaign turns out like this because this was an <laughs> exciting one on a Friday night. Yes, it was. I, I, like you said, I hope the rest of the season is just like this. It's just the beginning. I have no desire to walk to my car right now, so we can stay on the air as long as you would like, but I'm sure Rich has birthday plans. Yes, he does. So for my partner, Jay Simmons, this is John Fitzgerald. Final count tonight here at Portage High School, Valparaiso 50 and the Portage Indians 47. This has been Game Night in the Region on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town.